Good evening and welcome to the regular council meeting for Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, and we are starting at 6.02 p.m. At this time, we have uh, some special people who are here with us, and I know they're special because Mr. Glandy is one of you. No. <laughs> we are very, uh, very happy to have Strathmore High School Lady Spartans. I don't know if you still call them Lady Spartans anymore. Strathmore High School Spartans. Uh, 3A basketball provincial champions, and the coaching staff as well, head coach uh, Mr. Dion Galandi. But I just wanted to, on behalf of uh, the town of Strathmore and our council and our administration, congratulate you not only on winning South Central Zones two years in a row, which is a great feat in itself because we know that South Central Zone is the toughest in Alberta. And not only did you win the zone championships two years in a row, but you're now repeating as provincial champions. And so we thank you for all your efforts, the efforts of the coaching staff and the players and all the dedication and playing through injuries. Uh, you've brought a lot, uh, a great deal of honor and uh, prestige and, and fame to Strathmore High, but also to the town of Strathmore. So we're hoping as a council that we can start to do this more often for other school sports, uh, pe uh, teams that win provincials, but also things like diploma achievements, um, artistic achievements in the arts. But for tonight, we're going to be honoring Strathmore High Spartan basketball team. So I think if now, if I could have uh, Mr. Glandy come up and council, if you could join me in front of our seating areas and you can use the microphone, and the desk raises and lowers if you need uh, height adjustment. And you just have to make sure the button is pressed on. I think we're gonna be in front of our spots. Okay, Bethy Salmon. Emma Skrepnik. Asia Smith. Jaylene Scheller. Jill Hilton. <laughs> Lena Johansson. Madison Davidson is uh, sick today, but she's also one of our team members. <laughs> Maya Hansen. <laughs> Olivia Damon.
Reagan McLeod. Tessa Galandi. Our manager, Lauren Hansen. Coaching staff, Aaron Work. Nikki Leggett. Robin McLeod. And I'm Dion Galandi. And um, I have uh, Okay, we move now to item two, confirmation of agenda. This time I'd like to uh, ask if any of the councillors have any emergent items to add to tonight's agenda. Anything from council? 
Councillor Peterson. Your Worship, if I uh, might be allowed to add 12 point, to 12.6 under CAO dialogue, um, for, under FOIP section 24, subsection 1B, um, Wheatland Housing Management Body. Okay. Uh, anything from administration or led services? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, administration is going to be requesting that Council amend the agenda to delete item 12.4, Medical Services, Advice from Officials, FOIP Section 241A, and replace it with a Board and Committee matter, uh, um, Advice from Officials, FOIP Section 241A. Okay, thank you. So at this time, I'm looking for a motion to confirm the agenda as amended. Councillor Wagoner. I move that Council adopt the April 17th, 2024 regular county, uh, Council meeting as amend, agenda as amended and delete section 12.4 medical services advice from officials, uh, FOIP section 24.1A and add 12.4 board and committee matter advice from officials FOIP section 24 1A. Thank you. And you've all heard the uh, motion. All in favor? Aye. And the motion is sorry, carried. Sorry, Your Worship. But was that, did the council want to add that WHMB item as well to the agenda? Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Is that? I didn't ignore you. Three, <laughs> and we have And, and I would also add 12.6 um, WHMB. Thank you for that. Uh, so we're adding that as a motion to add that to the first motion, if everyone's clear on that. All in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. Uh, we have no public hearing tonight. We have no public comments and there are no delegations other than Strathmore High. So that brings us to item six, consent agenda. And I'd uh, just like to ask council if there are any items that uh, any of the councillors would like to see removed from the consent agenda. And if not, then I'd be looking for a motion either way, actually. Councillor Peterson. I would move the council adopt the recommendations of the following agenda by omnibus motion, 7.1 special council meeting minutes, March 27, 24. 7.2, regular council meeting minutes, April 3rd, 2024. 11.1, thank you letter from the Strathmore Municipal Library. 11.2, Strathmore Municipal Library year in review. Thank you for that motion. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor Langmaid, Deputy Mayor Langmaid, I have that. We move now to eight business, 8.1 2023 Town of Strathmore audited financial statements, which is on page 17 of the agenda package. Good evening, Leanna. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. So good evening, your worship and council. I'm here tonight to present to you our consolidated, consolidated financial statements for 2023. Our annual recommendation is that we come to you with an unqualified audit report. I'm going to tell you up front this audit report that you have in front of you is a qualified audit report. And this is due to our ARO, our asset retirement obligation we did not meet for 2023. We brought this to you in our 2024 budget and asked for funding to get some assistance on getting a consultant to help us get this completed. And we are starting the process in 2024 for this.
Veronica, can you get the next slide, please? So as you can see on the screen, our financial assets saw a slight increase of $3.6 million. And this was mainly due to our trade receivables, our trade and other receivables. The significant increases were due to the recording of our uh, accrual for our Municipal Sustainable Initiative grant and our Canada Community Building grants. So one of the things that we try and do is we want to record um, the asset or the receivable for that. And then if we haven't spent it, we want to show it in deferred revenue, which you'll see farther down. Our liabilities actually only decreased for, uh, for about $500,000. And this was due to the lowering of our accounts payable. We had less expenses that we actually had to accrue. And uh, we had a little bit higher of our employee benefits obligation. And as I had mentioned in our financial assets, because we accrued so much in our uh, grants, we had to show it also the offset in our deferred revenue. The significant item to note in the liabilities is the significant reduction in our long-term debt. That was $2.6 million. And I want to commend all of you on allowing administration to go down this path and meet matching what our strategic plan is on paying down our debt at such a significant rate. So overall, on this page, we see a reduction of our net financial debt or a reduction of that of $5 million. That is significant. And once again, I do want to commend all of you on helping us get there. Next slide, please, Veronica. So as you see here in our revenue, the difference from our budget was roughly about $1.3 million. This was due to um, our lead by example event, due to sponsorship and donations, our wildfire revenues and our utility revenues that were slightly up from budget. So right there we see an increase from what our budget was for about $1.3 million. Next slide, please, Veronica. In our expense section, as you'll see um, within the financial statements in note 15, we had a budget of $37.9 million, and our actual expenses only came in at 36.3, a savings of $1.4 million. That is significant. That means we're being fiscally responsible with our money and ensuring that we're doing the best for our community. Can you go to the next slide, please? This, uh, next slide. This is the most important slide to me. This one here shows us what our accumulated surplus. And the number one thing that I look at on, in our financial statements is our unrestricted surplus. This is monies that we've had in surplus or a deficit. And as a municipal government, we actually cannot run a deficit. If we run a deficit, we actually have to go back to our residents and collect it within a specified time period, which is normally 36 months. And I don't ever want to have to come to you guys and saying, we ran a deficit last year and not having a cushion in our unrestricted surplus. So one of the ways around, if we are coming into a situation like that, is we can always pull money from our reserves to fund uh, a deficit like that. Um, with my time being here in Strathmore, we have, I have never faced being in a deficit here. And this is due to the fiscal responsibility of you council and administration. So remember back on March 20th, I stood in front of you pre presenting to you that we had an anticipated surplus, surplus of $1.5 million. And council approved that we transfer that to reserves. This also helped us get to um, having an unrestricted surplus of only a quarter million dollars instead of $1.8 million. By transferring these funds to reserves, this allows council the flexibility and, the, and being able to use their discretion to use the reserve funds for infrastructure projects, programs, and services. This is best practice to allocate surpluses to the financial reserve accounts. 
this practice also provides an enhanced fiscal management of municipal funds and moves the funds into the reserves to allow council to be able to use those for um, infrastructure projects, programs, and services. Can you go to the next slide, please, Veronica? On this slide, I, it seems to have, uh, okay. Um, this, this slide is a demonstration of our accumulated surplus for future use. As you can see, we're lower than the comparable population average. We're also lower than the comparable town average. But we have stayed consistent right around the $10 million mark. And this is one of the items that we need to decide as a group, what are we comfortable on having in our accumulated surplus, which is also part of our reserves. Um, so this slide, um, I'm gonna sorry, go back and saying, basically shows what is not already invested in our tangible capital assets and represents the overall surplus that is available for future use. Next slide, please. This slide here shows our net debt compared to our annual revenue. The net debt provides a measure of future revenue required to pay for past transactions. The ratio that is increasing would indicate that the more time that would we need to eliminate our debt. And as identified in our strategic plan, one of our priorities is to pay down our debt. And we are doing a phenomenal job on doing this. And I think that administration and council has done a great job on being able to continually do this. So as you see the spike in 2020 of our debt, that is where we took on additional debt for funding of our municipal building, the emergent funding to assist with COVID-19. And as you can tell in 2023, we have paid down a significant amount. The money that we had borrowed for the emergent for COVID-19, we actually never used. So that's why we paid that one down very quickly. We, we paid the $3 million probably back within 18 months, which is phenomenal. So going forward, as you'll see within our budget presentations on how we've been managing our debt and looking forward to see when taking on new debt is appropriate. So this will be a decision that'll be in front of you. Um, is it... I'm going to say, is it a new hockey arena? Is it a new municipal building? Hopefully not, we just built this one. Um, but these are going to be items that will be in front of you. Um, this is completely up to your discretion. And if your thought process is we want to use debt before we start using reserves, is not normally what administration would recommend to you. We need to evaluate what is good debt and what is more fiscally responsible using reserves. Next slide, please. This slide is our public debt charges to revenue. So that as soon as you see public, it kind of throws everything off and it doesn't make sense. So if you just look at it as debt charges based on our revenues. This indicator measures the debt charges as a percentage of the revenues. It illustrates the extent to which past borrowing decisions have made present constraints against our budget and the ability to meet our financial and service commitments in the current period. Specifically, the more our government uses revenues to fund debt servicing, the less it will be able to use on providing programs and services to the community. So I would like to turn it over to Darren Adamson, our managing partner of Avail, and then ask you guys if you have any questions. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm, my name is Darren Adamson. I am a, a partner at, at Avail. I'm your, your uh, engagement partner. I'm actually not the managing partner of the firm. That's, a, that's another one of my partners, but um, I'm just going to see if I can share my screen. It currently says I don't have permission, but... Um, Darren, I can have Veronica share your presentation. Okay, sure.
Okay, so yeah, um, next slide, please. So actually, if you just want to flip through to click all, all the ones on this page. So what I wanted to cover today was just kind of the, the uh, highlights of the independent auditors report, uh, super high level financial results, because Leanne has already presented the financial results and the notes as well. So I'll just hit a couple of those that I think are, are worthy of uh, highlighting. Uh, again, the indicators of financial condition, Leanna presented a couple and I have, I have selected a few as well. So, and then management letter and our post audit letter. So that's kind of what the agenda I had in mind. If, uh, the next slide, please. Um, so yeah, if you wanna just click all those open, that'd be great, thank you. Um, so Leanne did mention that uh, we do have a qualified audit opinion this year. So our, our auditor's report is in the financial statements. There's two pages. It lays out um, kind of the what our opinion is. And our opinion is that the financial statements are fairly presented, other than the fact that they haven't in included the AR, uh, asset retirement obligations yet. So that'll come next year, presumably. So other than that, we didn't find any issues whatsoever. Um, the auditor's report point, points out the responsibilities of management and counsel and, and the auditor. Nothing there has changed, so that's all the same. It's, if you haven't read through the auditor's report, it's kind of boring, but it is good information to read through once in a while. So I'll just leave it at that. And if we go to the next one. So, so Liana did already go through the, the statements, and so I just kind of thought, Really quickly, the operations um, statement of, of operations, you can see revenues, less expenses, we come to a de deficiency before others. So basically almost a break even this year on a $36 million budget. Didn't quite get to break even, but um, still almost $3 million better than budgeted. And then when we bring in capital revenues, um, we have an excess of just about $3 million. So. Um, it's down from last year because the previous year's capital revenue was quite a bit higher. There was the um, contributed assets from the Edgefield Phase Two project in the previous year, which we didn't have this year. So, and Leanna highlighted most of the other items. So, um, the next page shows the same thing: the um, very high-level statement of financial position. Um, again, Leanna highlighted the the change in the net debt, which exactly what I was going to point out as well. You made a $5 million improvement there. So that's great. And then um, overall accumulated surplus is up to 216 million. So next slide. Uh, and again, Leanne did talk about the breakdown of accumulated operating surplus. So out of the total of 216 million, 201 million has already been spent and invested in capital assets and the remaining 14 point seven million or so is available for, for future spending. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, so the debt limits and debt servicing limit, Leanna touched on this a, a bit as well, but so basically with the with the regulation, each year we do the we do a calculation of the total debt limit that's allowed by regulation. And it's based on your revenue each year. So it fluctuates, but this year it was up to over 54 million you actually have about 16 million of debt. So you have 38 million of debt capacity or roughly 70% of your capacity is unused. So you still have um, quite a bit of capacity should you decide to, to use it. And again, Leanna mentioned that you may or may not want to depending on um, what you might wanna fund through reserves, but that's, that is available if that's the option that you choose. So that was everything I think I had for the financials. And then I did have a few of the indicators of financial condition. Um, when we do the graphs, we, we kind of set the, the comparables based on population. So plus or minus 25% of the population is kind of what we're comparing to. And if you look at the actual graphs, um, so if we go to the first one, the blue line is the town of Strathmore. You can kind of see it on the graph on the, the legend there, but it's a little bit small. So the green one is the comparable towns. So that's all the towns in Alberta with a similar population range. The red line is all towns in Alberta. And then the purple line is all municipalities in Alberta with a population range with um, similar. So I, I usually like to compare to the green line as much as possible because that's similar. It's towns with a similar population range. Um, so this graph here is showing your total assets compared to liabilities. 
and the ratio is about 10 to 1. And in this graph, you, you do fake, um, compare favorably to your peers. <clears throat> and Leanna had shown, I think, the other one where it just shows financial assets to liabilities where you're a bit under. So that means that your tangible capital assets is higher than um, some than a lot of your peers. So there's there's quite a few different graphs and none of them tell the whole story. They all tell a little piece. And so you kind of got to look at them all together to get the whole picture. But um, the next graph shows um, the town's operating expenses as a ratio of the taxable assessment. So here we're using the taxable assessment which is the, basically when, when you do your tax bylaw each year and the assessor assesses the value of all the properties in the town, that's what we're using kind of as our proxy of how is the overall economy doing. So if we have a perfectly flat line, then that would mean our expenses are exactly in line with, with the economy. Um, you can see that it's gone up slightly in 2022 and, and down slightly this year, but overall the five-year period, it's pretty flat. So that means our expenses are in line with the economy. And there's another slide, I think it might be the next one, that shows the revenues kind of on the same basis. So we're using, now we're using our own source revenues. So revenues that are generated by the town. So it's 35 million and that's less than the total revenue that we saw in the income statement because here we're excluding federal and provincial grants. So we're just trying to get down to what can the town generate on its own without any support from the other levels of government. Um, and if you look at the graph here, it is actually pretty flat, but maybe even slightly increasing. So that tells me that the town's revenues and expenses are in line with the economy and very highly coordinated. And if anything, in the last few years, your revenues have exceeded expenses. So that is good. No concerns. Uh, the next graph, Leanna already, already looked at this one. Basically, this just shows that um, next year, in 2024, we're going to pay $2,639,000 in debt payments, including both principal and interest. This year, our revenues were $36.2 million, so that works out to about 7% of our revenues we're using to pay off past uh, to service our debt. And that's down from 12% a couple of two or three years ago, so that's a big improvement. Next slide. Again, Leanna already pointed this one out as well to show your spendable surplus and how that's um, gone in the last few years. So I, I don't have anything to add further on that one. And then the next one, please. That was it for, I think there might've been a few more graphs as well, but those are the ones I thought were kind of most indicative. Then we do have a management letter. And so each year we do have a recommendations letter. This year we have one recommendation only, and that is um, to make sure that we implement the ARO for next year. And, and so that's no surprise there. Um, lots of our clients will have several recommendations. And in this case, we only have just the one. So we, we do find that the town has strong systems and controls in place and, and a good uh, review and process mechanisms. So we don't have concerns that way. And we want to thank Liana and Riley for their assistance and, and the other team as well for, for helping us during our audit. Um, there's one other letter that we provide as well each year, and, and that'll be on the next slide. So we call that our post audit letter. Um, there are a number of factors that we are required to communicate with council if we find them. So we didn't find any illegal acts or fraud or, or have any reasons to suspect, to suspect that. We didn't have any disagreements with management or any particular difficulties during the audit. So there was kind of a, we have great cooperation. If there's any issues, we just work through them together. So, and then the next page shows um, some upcoming changes in the standards. So there are uh, three new standards that are coming into effect next year, but honestly, none of them are really gonna affect the town. Um, if any, it'd be minor. And then the last one is under financial statement presentation in four years we have a new look financial statements that one i i'm kind of looking forward to because they're going to show the financial statements in particular the statement of financial position will kind of look more like a balance sheet like it used to in in years past but um that's still a few years out that's already been postponed once so we'll see what happens on that one but uh, just just a heads up on what's coming and that is everything i think the next slide i think is just 
questions. So, um, yeah, so that was all the highlights that I wanted to cover. Do we have any questions for our presenters tonight? Councillor Peterson? So I know you may have explained this before, but when I was reading the audit report and looking at the um, ARO and trying to figure out what a, what a um, PS3280 was as the son of PS3270, and it said it was a ARO, and then you go back and look at the next thing, and it would say it was a PS3280. And uh, so I do know that it is there to account for liabilities. But can, can you tell us any more about it in terms of practical application, what that means in terms of this community? And if I was watching this at home, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, the, it's a new standard, so PS3280, so PS is public sector standards. So we follow the public sector accounting standards. And it's a new standard that's that's put in place this year. So basically what the standard says is if we have an asset that has a, an embedded liability that we're gonna need to deal with at some point when we retire the asset, and the most common one that we're seeing is asbestos in buildings. So up until the beginning of the 1990s, most buildings had asbestos as part of the construction and then they banned it. So if any newer buildings, we don't have it. but if we do have buildings built before the 1990s, it's likely they have asbestos. And when we eventually either renovate or get, demolish the building, the asbestos has to be dealt with in the manner prescribed by the legislation. So there's a cost component to that. And so basically that's what they're trying to capture here is at some point we're gonna to have to deal with, with the asset retirement and the, and the resulting costs. And so it'll be a big estimate as to how much it's going to cost 20, 30, 40 years down the road, and then it'll be a matter of discounting it back into today's dollars. So it's a, it's a lot of work, um, and it's it's a lot of, it's a big estimate, really. It's, it's not going to be come down to here's the exact number. It's it's going to be a kind of a range of, of uh, numbers and pick, pick the one that seems to make the most sense and, and go with it. So hopefully that that helps. It does help, and so, so just... We are, we are not alone in, in being late to this party. Like it's something that is going, it's onerous. Yeah, it's very onerous and no, you're not alone in that. Right. There's a few other um, of our clients as well that are- I appreciate the explanation, thank you. Councillor Wiley, would we be able to go back to the slides? I'd like to see uh, the slide on net debt to annual reserve. Or have annual revenue, sorry, net debt to annual revenue. Sorry, the chart, my apologies, the chart that's on net debt to annual revenue. It's page 56 of 124 in my book. Instead of while you're loading it, I just it's a positive thing. When I look at this, as both presenters have said in, in 2020, in 2020 when compared to other towns of comparable size and population, um, we're actually creeping up onto the high end. Sorry. We're creeping up onto the high end, but when you look at it today, 2023, our, our debt is, is way down when compared to other municipalities of, of the same population. So this, is, this comes with a compliment. Everything I'm hearing is just so positive. Debts are down, expenses are lower, uh, savings are going up, but if we could go Back one slide, I believe, then to the chart on accumulated surplus available for future use. Mm -hmm. I believe it's, well, it's just one back one page 55 in my notes, but I think it's just one click back. Yeah, you guys have it. That's it. Um, I guess I'm just looking for administration's opinion on this. So when I scan those numbers, I see our reserves while going up 
are still significantly lower than comparable towns. So we've got about 14 million in reserves. Comparable towns have 30 million, double us. And then comparable population averages, uh, they're in excess of 50 million, which is over triple us. So when I see that, I, I think that means we just need to, to buckle down and, and keep saving. What does administration think? Through the chair, this is one of the things that we will be identifying within our 2025 budget. Um, I believe we have another report in front of you tonight um, that we're gonna start talking about. These are some of the directions we've been, if we're going to spend our reserves, how are we going to replenish these? And are we committed to putting the money back? There, we have multiple different options. We can do it as rip the Band-Aid off and let's do a massive tax increase. Probably not the route that you guys are gonna go. I, not something that I think administration would recommend either to you at this point. But we need to come to a comparable and comfortable balance between the two of us, or the, all of us. And um, it, it's a starting point. As you can see in this graph, we are significantly lower than the comparable population average. I'm not saying that we're dismal. We do have money in reserves, but if we are going to spend it, how are we going to replenish it? So a little bit of food for thought. Yeah, well, I just think those are such wise words because it, the choices are, are pretty simple. If you're increasing spending, then you either have to empty your savings account or you have to bring in more revenue. And in our case, that's tax dollars. So I just really appreciate the slide. And maybe like you say, we'll be looking at it again later tonight. So I wanna give a little bit of a, just a story and I'm not a history teacher. I'm not a teacher of any sort. So please don't uh, slap my wrist too hard. So we've, a number of us have had children you know what, they do eventually move out. They do want to go to college or post-secondary. Some of us afford and we stuff money away on an annual basis so that they can move on on their lives and their careers and move on and eventually move out of our homes. But to be able to do that, they have to be able to earn money. So how do they do that? They go to school, they get more of an education. So how are we supporting our community to get better funding in the future. So we have to put money away now to support going forward in the future. Thank you. I have one question kind of tied into Councillor Wiley's and, and I see, you know, I, I totally agree with the way our debt, or sorry, our, our uh, reserves are. But is there ever a detriment to having a huge amount in reserves as opposed to a smaller amount in reserves? Does it demonstrate anything about a municipality that might also be considered? I have seen it a multiple of different ways. You get your reserves to the point that they're so, so high. Um, very few municipalities ever reach that. Um, I've been in this for a number of years. Perception of the public you've got so much money put away, you've been overtaxing me for how many years? But we're also saving for the future, so then when we have to build a new facility, of, say an operations building, a hockey rink, uh, a library, we don't always have to go to the market and look for a debt, and we're planning for the future. We're trying not to go, oh, by the way, I need another $30 million. Well, $30 million is how much in a tax increase if you want to pay for it all in one year. That's not feasible. Um, I don't want to say it would detrimental your careers as counselors, but it could potentially have that effect. Um, so there is a bit of a demographic issue that I hear from time to time. So ten, typically your older population would say, why am I putting all this money in the bank for something that you're gonna build 30 years from now that I'm not gonna use, right? 
And so there's the argument that the next generation should fund that through debt or whatever, right? So there's there's sometimes some demographic issues or, or positions, I guess, positions by relative age on, on how these should be approached. So I, I know you're going to be presenting a little bit later, but are, are you folks thinking a similar approach to what we've done on this year's budget as we go into 25 and 26? Uh, the budget guidelines we're developing right now for senior leadership to bring to you guys, and I believe it's late May, early June for your passing uh, or comments and stuff like that. It'll be a very similar process. Maybe one of the recommendations that um, we're going to agree on is maybe we put a 1%, 2%, 5% for repairs and maintenance into reserves. And maybe is this a way to help replenish some of the monies that we're spending out of reserves? Okay, thank you. And then I think this is something that Councillor Wiley has mentioned in the past, and that is uh, we have been analyzing the various land assets we have in town. Are there, is there still, is that still coming to us to look at potential uh, revenue increases there from sales? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, I, but it, <clears throat> it also looks at what are your land needs, not just what is your surplus land too, right? So, you know, there, there may be land to sell, but there may be land that the town is going to need to buy at some point in the future. So you want to have a master plan and say, so in, you know, year X, we need land for a new recreational center or new baseball diamonds or whatever. Like you want to get your debits and your credits in that, not just look at what you're holding as assets. Yeah, and I think Councillor Wiley at one point had talked about creating a, you know, a, a reserve for potential land purchase that we may have to do protective services or something down, down into the future a bit. Okay, thank you. Those are all the questions and comments I have. Councillor Peterson. I just wanted to say that in my long association with council, both through uh, being a, a bystander and, and being here since 2013, and I have never seen a um, where 70% of our capacity uh, is unused. I'm glad of that. I'm happy to see that. But it's a, it speaks so well to our leadership and what you've brought to helping us put our house in order, our, our CAO and your senior leadership team. And uh, I appreciate the fact that council has always been been um, you know confronted with those stark realities in in very definitive. Um, and clear terms that allow us to do the work that we need to do uh, to to make this a really fulsome process, and and it has uh, set us um, on a really good path. And and if you'd have said to me four years ago that post pandemic, uh, with expanded fire services and new buildings and the attention that we've had to give to um, our stormwater pond and uh, stormwater ponds and the cleaning and and, and um, regenerating all of those things that we faced and still um, been able to manage this community in the way that uh, that is um, before us today um, it's something for which I am truly thankful and, and I know that it comes from from the expertise that uh, is upstairs in this office I'm very grateful Thank you for that. I echo that. Um, in our strategic plan, the, the budgeting um, presentations you folks do have been the, the most clear that I've ever experienced. And then to see the, the work that has shown up in our strategic plan that we all did and to know that, you know, building reserves, paying down debt is, is part of our strategic plan and we own it and we live it and we, we talk about it on a regular basis. CAO Scoble. Uh, just a reminder that uh, while we have the auditor online, you do, if you had any concerns you wish to discuss in private, you, you can go in camera with the auditor. It's not required, but I just wanted to remind you, you do have that, that opportunity available to you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from home, uh, Councillor Montgomery or Deputy Mayor Langmaid? Uh, none for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much, Liana and Darren. Thank you very much for your presentations and your willingness to uh, answer our questions. You're welcome. Thank you, Darren. I believe we just need a motion to accept the financial statements. Right. Am I able to get a motion for that? Councillor Peterson? 
I would move that we accept the 2023 Town of Strathmore audited financial statement as presented. Thank you very much. Now that we have that motion on the floor, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. Uh, item nine, bylaws. We have no bylaws coming tonight. That brings us to item 10, 10.1, questions between councillors and council statements. Not seeing or hearing any. 10.2, boards and committee reports. Same for that. 10.3, question and answer period. Moving right along, you have no questions tonight, Mark? Thank you very much. Administrative inquiries, do we have any tonight, uh, Jonathan? 10.5, notices of motion. We have none for that. So I think that brings us to a closed meeting. We need a motion to go in camera. Councillor Wegener. I move that council move in camera to discuss items related to sections 24-1A and 24-1BI of the Freedom of Information and Privacy Act at 6.53 p.m. Thank you for that motion. All in favor? Aye. And that motion is carried. We're going in camera at 